So thank you for the introduction. So I will present the 3D elastic tensor imaging, a proof of concept to characterize soft tissues elastic and isotropy. So as you all know, um, 2D shear radial lithography, it's, um, it's been used to characterize elastic properties and it's based on the, the creation of a push beam by acoustic radiation force that uh, generates a shear wave. And then by switching to an ultra fast imaging mode, we are with a very high frame rate, we are capable of tracking this shear wave propagation. The, and then if we are capable of uh, calculating the shear wave uh, velocity, we can uh, determine the shear modulus, which is directly rel related to the young modulus, which gives us the stiffness or the elasticity of the tissue. However, in the, in the cardiac field, uh, for example, uh, the heart is an, an, an isotropic tissue. So if we take a short axis uh, orientation view, uh, in this case, it's the short art, art, uh, axis per external uh, view, we will find shear wave velocities around two meters per second. And then if we rotate the probe in 90 degrees in the same position, We'll have, we'll have a long axis uh, peristernal view orientation, and then we will obtain shear wave velocities around one meter per second. So it means that shear wave velocity is sensitive to the, to the tissue and isotropy, and the, the probe orientation is uh, it's very important for a good uh, shear wave uh, velocity estimation. So uh, an imaging techno uh, technology or imaging, imaging modeling that could allow for uh, shear wave velocities with angle independent is of great value. In our group in 2012, we presented, we introduced the ultrasound elastic tensor imaging uh, to the imaging modality that is based on the shear wave uh, elastography uh, uh, method. So in a, we, we create different shear waves, uh, we generate different shear rates by retaining a, a probe in different uh, probe, ang probe angles. And uh, we, by doing this, we are capable of um, estimating a shear wave velocity profile. In this case, we'll perform in the, in the, in the heart in an open chest model. And uh, by doing this, we are capable of uh, uh, estimating shear, the, and a shear wave velocity profile where the shear wave velocity is higher along the, the fibers orientation and lower across the fibers orientation. So by doing this, we were capable of uh, simulating the five fibers uh, orientation angles of the, of the heart. However, it's not the only uh, imaging modality that allows for uh, tissue and isotropy evaluation. MRI, uh, diffusion tensor imaging, DTI, it's also capable of doing it. Uh, as you can see by this uh, fiber tracking view of these beautiful images. However, it's, comparing with ETI, the temporal resolution is very low. For example, uh, for one specific moment of the cardiac cycle, we need 45 minutes of acquisition instead of ETI that we only need 20 millise uh, milliseconds of acquisition uh, for uh, one uh, specific acquisition. So. Um, ETI has a, temporal, a higher temporal resolution, so it can be applied in, in clinical practice. However, in 2D, we still have challenge, since we need to rotate the probe in order to create a shear wave velocity profile and access to the tissue elastic and isotropy. So it's just not realistic in clinical practice. However, our group uh, last year introduced 40 ultrafast shear wave velocity. And uh, by, um, by, with this technique, we open a new window to, to apply this concept of elastic tensor imaging in 3D. So in order to create, in order to perform 4D shear wave, uh, ultrafast shear wave elastography, we need to perform 3D ultrafast imaging. And uh, our group developed a 3D ultrafast ultrasound prototype that it's fully pro programmable and uh, it's based on Explorer platform. We also use a 2D matrix array probe with a three or eight megahertz uh, central frequency, and we use a 3D plane wave imaging. These pl plane waves are created by uh, putting vir uh, creating virtual sources behind the probe and putting them in specific locations in order to tilt 
the, the plane waves. So uh, again, as uh, 2D ultrafast shear wave velocity, 3D ultrafast shear wave velocity, it's based on a creation of a push beam by a 2D spherical law, and then by switching to a ultrafast shear wave uh, 3D. Uh, Zero, sorry, by switching to a 3D ultrafast imaging mode, we are capable of tracking this uh, shear wave propagation with the same probe. So we use the same probe to create the push and to track the shear wave propagation. In this case, we first evaluated in the iso isotropic, uh, isotropic phantom. So as you can see, the shear wave uh, pattern in, in one depth, as the, right here, it's uh, circular, so it, it shows that we have identical elastic properties in all directions. However, if we only perform one push, we will uh, miss the information in the region where we generate the push. So in order to recover the full volume, we need, we need to perform different, different uh, uh, and create different uh, pushes locations. In this case, we performed uh, five pushes with a pentagon pattern, but it's not obliged. And then, for each push, so we will apply a 3D directional filtering followed by a 3D time of flight uh, using an equinal uh, equation to assess uh, the shear wave propagation direction locally and also the, 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 uh, the shear wave velocity estimation. Then by doing this, uh, we will uh, assess a 3D shear wave velocity map for each push. And since we, we, ha we are in the isotropic phantom uh, case, we can sum this information and we will obtain a complete uh, full volume of a 3D shear velocity map. This, uh, the average values were compared uh, as well with the uh, Explorer system, system in a 2D plan and they were uh, in a good agreement. So now, if you pass to uh, an isotropic model, so a, transfer, a transverse isotropic phantom that was created in our lab uh, using a PVA phantom that was uh, stretched, the, stretched during the uh, polarization process, we will perform five different pushes, again in different uh, positions, one in the center in order to evaluate the, the shear wave uh, a propagation pattern, and then we will perform four different pushes in the corners of the probe. So by doing this, as you can see, our shear wave uh, propagation pattern changes in function of, uh, of the tissue and isotropy. So here, as you can see by the central push, we have a higher velocity in the, along the fibers orientation, and, the, and the, that is so it's faster. Uh, the, uh, and the uh, lower uh, shear wave velocity across the fibers orientation. So then, if you apply, as in the isotropic phantom, uh, the 3D directional filtering, the 3D time of flight, we'll obtain for each uh, four pushes of the corners, uh, we'll obtain a 3D shear velocity map, but now we'll not send this information because we are not anymore in the isotropic uh, case who will assess the elastic tensor that it's com uh, by doing an elliptical fit in each voxel in the central region of the, our field of view. So the central region of the, of the probe. Uh, we, in this case, we didn't, uh, do, uh, we didn't uh, do for the, for the fifth uh, push. So the central push, we, it was only used to comparison. So the, the four lateral pushes were the only ones that we applied this, this method. So the elastic tensor is composed by the, the by the major axis of uh, an ellipse, so in each voxel, and the, the 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 so it's the shear wave velocity along the fibers. The minor um, the minor axis of the of the ellipse are the shear wave velocities across the fibers, and then the orientation of the ellipse itself it's the fibers uh, orientation angle. So by doing this, we can access to uh, So by doing this, we can access to this kind of uh, ellipsoid representations. Here, we only represent one depth to easier visualization. That's, uh, that allows us to assess tissue and isotropy locally. 
Then, in order to, we averaged the values in the region of interest, and we found that the, the shear wave velocities along the fibers orientation were 3.35 uh, meters per second. And the, um, then the, the shear wave velocities across the fibers orientation were 1.9 meters per second, and the fiber uh, orientation angle were 170 uh, degrees, more or less. And this value was in agreed agreement with the comparison, comparison of the shear wave uh, pattern, shear wave propagation pattern of the central push. We also calculate the fractional anisotropy that was introduced by Lee in uh, 2012, and uh, we found 0 0.52 of fractional anisotropy coefficient. That is in agreed agreement by the one presented by Chatelain, Chatelain in uh, et al. in his paper, where where he introduced the the re well the recipe to to this kind of transverse isotropic patterns. We can also represent in real 3D, so with the 3D fiber tracking. So here we can see that the, the fibers are more or less in the same uh, orientation, uh, even if we have some heterogeneities in the middle. So then uh, we actually, uh, we also evaluate the, the technique in vivo. So we first decided to evaluate the 40 ultrafast shear wave elastography. Uh, to see if we were capable of uh, uh, seeing uh, or to evaluate any tissue and isotropy. And we performed it in one volunteer in a biceps brachial muscle. And as you can see, we have an elliptical pattern of the shear wave elastography. Uh, and we found that uh, the shear wave velocity along the fibers orientation are were three meters per second and across the, the fibers were two meters per second. So by using 40 ultrafast shear wave elastography, we are capable of, uh, of, uh, of uh, evaluate and access tissue and isotropy. However, in this case, we didn't perform uh, ETI reconstruction because we are still working in the, our imaging quality limitations uh, that are especially uh, due to the, the aperture size of our probe that it's very small. So in order to, we don't, our imaging frame rate due to this fact, it's, um, it's good, but it's, uh, well, we are, we are limited. And also the, our, uh, our SNR. So to, to conclude, uh, 40 ultrafast shear wave elastography allows for in vitro, in vitro, in vivo and isotropy evaluation. 3D was, um, was shown to be feasible and allows for fiber tracking in vitro. And uh, as perspectives, we want to use ultra-fast diverging wave transmission in order to increase our field of view. And, and like this, we can uh, in, increase the number of current compounding uh, that Im, uh, emissions that we will do, uh, that we can do in order to improve the, the image quality. And like this, we can apply this uh, ETI reconstruction in vivo in muscles, and especially in the heart muscle. Thank you for your attention.